I suppose someone knows what's going on. Now we're going to look at the T-26. Now the T-26 is a Russian tank. This one actually came to us from Finland, and I'll tell you about that a bit later. But to begin with, the T-26 and all of its sort of family, if you like, emanate from the British six-tonner, the Vickers Armstrong Marquis. And um, originally, the Soviets in about 1930 tried to build their own version of this and failed. And their authorities told them to, that they get in the British tank and pay royalties on it and build on that. And they built actually some 5,000 of these, which is quite remarkable. They built more altogether, if you count all the other turrets, but of the one we're looking at, the 1933 model, they built about 5,000 of them, which is typical of the Russians to build them in huge numbers. But that's how this tank looks from the outside. From the turret downwards, at least from there downwards, it looks like a six tonne. It's got the same sort of four-cylinder air-cooled engine driving into a five-speed transmission at the front, front drive sprockets, and a typical Vickers Armstrong's suspension. But the real secret of the T-26 is what goes on above that level. They put in a new turret and they added a 45 millimeter gun, which gave it a much more powerful um, anti-tank potential than anything that uh, Vickers had produced. And it was actually quite a good tank in its day, with plenty of um, to far as firing is concerned. The only problem they had, and they didn't really find this out until the fighting in Manchuria, was that the armour was a bit thin. It was the same with their high speed, their BT tanks. The armour was a bit thin by sort of other standards, and they were tanks were being penetrated. So what we're looking at now is a tank that actually fought in the Russo-Finnish War of 1940 and it was captured by the Finns. It is said now, I mean, a number of excuses have been offered about the, uh, the freezing weather and the fact that it ruined a lot of the fuel that the Russians had used, but the main problem seems to have been the lack of leadership from their officers. They'd lost so many in Stalin's purges that the men who took over weren't so efficient and the whole lot, um, there was no reason otherwise for the Finns to wipe them out. But a large number of these were um, taken into Finnish service afterwards, after being captured. And after a while, they, they got a bit long in the tooth, and they stripped them of their internal fittings, their engines, transmissions, and that sort of thing, and dug them in on their defensive positions, uh, with just the turret showing. And in that condition, they lasted for years. Well, of course, they do at least last in that state, and it meant that when they dug them up, the Finns had quite a number of T-26 tanks to spare. And for a pre-war Russian tank, that's quite remarkable. And that's how we got it. When it arrived here, it was in a terrible state. The armour was all broken and collapsing, but it's been restored quite well externally. And it really looks the part now. But this particular tank was used in a movie in Finland. And during the, uh, the, the filming, they had to do a bit where they set it on fire. So they set it alight and um, everyone stood back and looked around and it really looked good. But it meant that by the time we got the tank, not only was a lot of the armour plate damaged, there were signs of scorching and this sort of thing all over it. And we had to do quite a lot of work to get it back into a reasonable condition. But at least we've now got a T26, and this is the model 1933, which we can show people. And it really is an effective little tank in its day, much better than the tank from which it was developed, which is quite remarkable. A very efficient little tank. If you enjoyed that video, please support the Tank Museum by subscribing to their YouTube channel and also support them on Patreon.